Our campaign was also very fortunate and happy to see not one, but two articles appear about our amendment in Florida Sportsman Magazine. Our next speaker is Blair Wickstrom. He is the senior editor of Florida Sportsman's Magazine. He's also board president of votewater.org, board member of Friends of the Everglades, and board member of the Rivers Coalition. Blair? Hi, and thanks for having me uh, tonight, and thanks to all of you for uh, participating. It, uh, it really does make a difference, and I'll touch on that in a minute, but now um, we are the, the state's largest fishing uh, and outdoor magazine, and uh, we're in our 53rd year, and uh, it's, it's in the state of Florida, it's a big business. Fishing is a big business, but it's also a way of life. Um, in fact, the recent AARP survey surveyed men over 65, and they said that the number one activity, the number one activity ahead of visiting and spending time with grandchildren was fishing. Um, in the state, uh, three million people fish. It uh, contributes to the bottom line $10 billion from the fishing, marine, and boating sectors. Um, the industry supports over 80,000 jobs. So this is, to the state of Florida, it's a big business. Um, and as I mentioned, a way of life. Um, but the thing is, without fish, there is no industry. There is no way of life. And without clean and healthy water, there are no fish. And so it's crazy that we don't have a stronger uh, influence with our lawmakers. Uh, considering how important uh, fishing in the outdoors is to everybody that lives in the state of Florida. But we've got, unfortunately, two much smaller but more politically effective industries in the state that do a much better job of getting to the politicians, our elected officials, and getting them to do essentially what they want. And these two industries are much smaller. They don't contribute uh, really anything much that we need in the state of Florida. And that's big sugar in the way of ag um, and the phosphate industry. And so it's, it's just crazy that we, we do allow these two very small in compared to um, tourism and fishing uh, to to sort of dominate the way they do in Tallahassee and Washington. And it's not too unsurprising when you look at the number, the small army of lobbyists that these two industries have in Tallahassee. And that's that's why we're here today, is because we can't get our elected leaders to do what we would like them to do. Um, and, it, and it sort of gets me to a point where we were 30 years ago with a similar situation, but even a smaller industry, the commercial fishing industry. And as recreational anglers, we were doing everything we could to try to improve fishing in the state of Florida for the people of the state of Florida. And uh, so sort of like now, we were running into situations where we couldn't get, this was in the early 90s, 1992, after three successive years of not getting gear restrictions on some of the commercial equipment that was being used to gill net, in this case, in most cases uh, that was affected by this mullet fishing in the state of Florida, we couldn't get gear restriction passed. So what we, after three years of not being able to get uh, a bill out of committee, in 1992, our magazine launched a similar initiative to this. Totally by volunteers, we launched the Save Our Sea Life Amendment. We had two years to raise, well, two years to, in, in our case, 482,000 signatures. So almost uh, half of what's required now. So it was, a, it was a big lift then, it's even a bigger lift now, but we were successfully able to get the ballot, get the initiative, 
Save Our Sea Life initiative on the 1994 ballot, and it passed overwhelmingly. Over 70% of the people that voted, voted in favor of it. And uh, so again, it's, it's one of those things where it can be done. It takes a lot of work, as everybody here knows. But more importantly, it can be done. And, uh, and, and, and that's, that's sort of where we are today. And, uh, and in, in our case, today, we're not talking about gear restrictions and, and, and gear that, you know, was sort of uh, uh, the, the issue of the day. John Consani mentioned the idea that, you know, things have progressively gotten worse on the pollution side. Um, I think today, what we're dealing with uh, is, is not allocation issues on the commercial side. It's not gear. It, it's straight up fishable waters. We do not have a forecast that really points to better days ahead, better fishing ahead. It's all going down. Mm -hmm. It's nothing is positive when it comes to the idea that our waters are getting you know, better. They're getting managed more properly. They're 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 at a point where we we can start to all just relax a little bit and and go fishing. So, I, I'll just sort of end with number one. We've done it before with total volunteers, and I think it's more important today than ever. I think this amendment is more important than the Gillnet ban in 1994. And again. Um, just with without a doubt, I think I'll just close with if we can get this initiative on the ballot in 2024, I know it will pass overwhelmingly. Thanks. Thank you, Blair. Yes, we are very confident that once it's on the ballot, it will pass. There is a history in Florida of Floridians supporting environmental initiatives. Thanks.